we should um, explain all things with reason, you know. Um, obviously, when... If you so, do you believe? Uh, I'm not, no, he doesn't. No, no, he doesn't want it. Abdullah. No, 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 he's not. He's not. He's not comfortable. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. I'm honestly yeah. just looking for privacy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's fine. That's fine. If you're recording sounds as well, yeah, I'll just listen to you. Don't worry. We're, we're, they're just focusing on us too. Don't worry. You're not. You're not part of the company. Don't worry. Don't worry. So. No problem. I understand that. I respect the fact that you might not want to be in camera. Can, can you put this? Can you put this on for me? That's what, sorry. Yes. Put me on if you want. Just to get the caption. Yeah. If you want to, you can go to next to him. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. That sound would be good. That's fine. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Right. So, my question is this to you, right? If you believe that the Father and Son shared the same divine knowledge, how can Jesus not know the Hour? Um, not only that, it's just that, that could that could be part of the issue, right? Um, and obviously, clearly, Jesus did not know that knowledge. If they share the same divine knowledge, can you explain to me logically? why Jesus didn't know that information. Now, I don't know if you're going to appeal to the fact that he was a human, and I don't know if you believe that Jesus had a divine nature as well as a human nature. Do you believe that Jesus was a 100% man? And 100 he, he's God? truly man, he's truly God, but it depends on like your model of the incarnation. Uh, are you familiar with a philosopher known as Andrew Loach? I've heard of him, yeah. yeah. So he has a model of the incarnation known as the pre-conscious model of the incarnation. And basically what he says is, think about your consciousness. Your consciousness is the part of your mind, which is your active mental states. So for example, self-awareness, uh, things like this, right? But your pre-consciousness, he implores this idea of a pre-consciousness. Your pre-consciousness is things that you knew, but they only come into your consciousness once you direct your attention towards them. For example, five minutes ago, I wasn't thinking two plus two equals four, but I always knew that in my pre-consciousness. So basically what it is, is that before Jesus comes in Kana, is an undivided, unembodied divine mind. So I'll just give the mic to him in a second. His mind is divided into distinct categories of parts. So, for example, he has a human consciousness, a human pre consciousness, and a divine pre consciousness. So, his knowledge of the hour would have lied within his divine pre consciousness. However, he would not have known that knowledge qua his human consciousness or human pre consciousness. Right. So, if you believe that Jesus had that pre knowledge of the, the hour, right? In, so, in his divine Okay, so then if you believe that Jesus had that knowledge in his divine knowledge, but in his human knowledge he didn't know that knowledge, then why did, why did Jesus make an exception to the rule by saying that only the Father knows that knowledge? See, the thing is, if you believe, okay, yeah. if you believe that Jesus had that divine knowledge, can hear you, but, he, but he lacked that knowledge in his human knowledge, then why did Jesus say the only one who knows that information yeah. is the Father? So specifically with the passage that concerns, so like Mark 13, 32, there's also a parallel of it in Matthew. It's followed by a parable of Jewish wedding. So what we say is we need to think about in Greek and Hebrew culture, what does the word know mean? Because it doesn't always mean to come to knowledge of something. It can also mean a, de a declaration. For example, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2, Paul says, I have, I've declared to know nothing among you but Jesus Christ and him crucified. Yeah. Or, sorry, I've decided to know nothing about you for Jesus Christ and crucified. Obviously, Paul knows things other than that Jesus Christ was just crucified, but he's saying that to know something, he's just saying it in a declarative way. Or when Adam knew Eve in the Old Testament, he didn't just come to intellectual knowledge of Eve. Or when God, for example, said, Israel only have I known. He's not saying that he only knows or has knowledge of Israel. He's just saying that he's only declaring that Israel is the nation that he is siding with. So what we say here is that this is a statement of declaration and a statement of declarative knowledge. Jesus is saying, I, am, I, am, I do not have the right to reveal the day or the hour. Only the Father has that right. But you're, okay. And we parallel that with the following passage of the Jewish parable. Because in Hebrew culture, only the father has the right to unveil what hour is the hour of the wedding. However, everyone else knows the hour, but only the father has the right to reveal it. Okay. I feel that you're doing something called eisegesis. You're providing uh, information that doesn't exist in the text. And you're providing information that falls outside the text. 
Yeah. Now, obviously, when we use the term only, right, in reference to, like, for example, it says of that day, of that hour, no, it's no man. Nay, not even the angels in heaven, but the Father, right? So, f for me, it seems pretty clear that that knowledge is only known by the Father. And plus, if we go to John 17, verse 3. So, do, do you want to stick with this passage or 17, verse 3? No, I'm actually, co it's actually, I'm actually correlating both. You would yeah, understand what because, if because if we go to 17, verse 3, then I'm going to have to take a while out of what I'm going to say to explain 17. Verse no, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. If you need to do that, that's fine. But again, you see, the reason why I'm bringing John 17, verse 3 is, is as follows. So, you know when Jesus says, of that day, of the hour, knows no man, not even the son, but the only one who knows the hour is the father, right? So that divine knowledge, right, is only accessible to the father alone, right? Now, John 17, verse 3 states that the father is the only true God, right? It says, this is life eternal, that they may know you are the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. See, the thing is, right, is that I have not seen any explicit evidence from the New Testament where Jesus says, I am God, worship me. What I, what I feel that Christians do is that they, they uh, implore ex implicit evidence where it is open to ambiguity. So, for example, like... Um, there might be several verses in the New Testament that it could allure to Jesus being possibly being God, but there's nothing clear cut that says where Jesus says, I am God, worship me. The most explicit verse in the New Testament that has been expunged is the first epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 7 and 8, which says that there are three that bear record in heaven the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. That, that verse is not original. Exactly. This verse has been and taken. We, we don't even use that verse to espouse the doctrine of the Trinity. The Church Fathers didn't use it in Nicaea. We don't use it either. But, in fact, I would rather use verse 20. But hold on. But in the 16th century, Christians, they used to believe that that was part of. Did they not believe that yeah. was part of the triune God? Yeah, but, but right? the problem so, that is that even modalists use that verse because they'll say, oh, well, what sense are they one in? Well, we might say they're one in a sense of hypostasis, so the Father is the Son, the Son is the Holy Spirit. So even that verse has some ambiguity to it. However, a verse in that very same chapter that is original to the Bible is verse 20, and that verse identifies Jesus as being the true God. Which is what? Which, which verse identifies him as being I'll God? Read, I'll read verse 20. Now, the reason why that this refers to Jesus is because you have to do a Greek exegesis of this verse. Okay, what's it, what verse is it? First uh, John chapter 5, verse 20. It says, And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding, so that we may know Him who is true, and we are in Him who is true, in His Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. So it's identifying Him as the true God. So what verse is this? John... Uh, first John chapter 5, verse 20. Okay. See, what I'm asking for, right, is explicit evidence. What you've in, what you've provided is not actually explicit to the word where Jesus actually makes that claim for himself. I will claim that this is reported speech. This is someone saying this about Jesus that he is um, God incarnate. But what I want to know is that did Jesus actually claim to be God? Did that? Did Jesus actually say, "I am God"? Are you saying that Jesus has to claim something to, it to be true? Because okay. If, if you believe in the Quran, that Jesus explicitly claimed in the Quran, I am Jesus and I am born of a virgin. No, no, hold on one second. See, does that come out of his lips in the Quran? Because it doesn't. Speak Quran. So does that mean, therefore, that we shouldn't believe that the Quranic Jesus believed that he is born of a virgin? No, no, no. What I'm saying to you, right, is that if we look in the Old Testament, right, the Old Testament is quite explicit. The Father identifies himself as the true God. There are various evidences in the Old Testament where God the Father actually claims that he is God. You know, for example, he says, there is no other God before me, for I am a jealous God. There is no other God besides me. Right? I think it's Isaiah chapter 45. He says, there is no other God except me. Who is the me here in this sentence? 
So it, it depends who you think is speaking. If we think that the Trinity itself is speaking, then of course there's no other God apart from the Trinity God. Because we believe that there's one God. Okay. That, so, I, I mean, should we come back to 17.3? Because okay, yeah, I, if you I want think to that a lot of your argument is resting on 17.3 here. Okay, so the reason why I, I actually um, brought up John 17 verse 3 is because, as I said earlier, is that Jesus identifies the Father as the only true God. So I, I, I'm, trying, I'm trying to understand from your mindset, how do you make that assumption that Jesus is God when Jesus himself said that the Father is the only true God? So I, I, need, I need clarity from you. Okay, so when we think about this, we need to think about the doctrine of the Trinity, right? Trinitarians believe that there's only one God, right? And that one God is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Now let's think about the way that that sentence is constructed. Jesus says... The, let, let's just read 17.3. Alright, let's read 17.3. Alright. He says here, and this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you've sent. Yeah. Now, first of all, notice that the Greek word monat modifies true God. It doesn't modify you. And if it modifies true God, what well, it's refuting as tritheism, not Trinitarianism. Because there's a difference between saying you are you only are the true God and you are the only true God. Because we believe that there is one true God, and we believe that Jesus Christ is the only true God, the Holy Spirit is the only true God, and the Father is the only true God. It's why in the Nicene Creed we can say we believe in one God the Father, because the Father is the one God. That's not to the exclusion of the deity of the Son. No, but hold on, but there's a there's a conjunction in the sentence. Jesus says this is life eternal, that they may know you. Who is you here? Right. So, Jesus identified the Father as the only what? True God. Right. So that excludes Jesus from being God. No, no, just in itself. Just from the why, sentence the itself. Why it doesn't exclude him from being God is because there's a difference, right? You're trying to make the sentence say you only are the true God instead of saying. No, no. That's why. No, 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 no. That's why I asked you. The Greek word monad modifies true God, not you. No, hold on a second. That's why I asked you just now when Jesus said. This is life eternal, that they may know you. That's why I ask you, who does Jesus who, identify? Who is the Father, and the Father is being identified as the only true God. Every single Trinitarian will agree with you that the Father is the only true God. That's it. So if Jesus so is the Jesus only true God, Jesus is also the only true God. No, the no, no. <laughs> that logically, rationally no, 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 does not make sense. There's a difference between. Okay, try, try to just think about it here. Man. There's a difference between saying you are the only true God and saying only you are the true God. No, this is oh, one exclusive. Yeah. Else uh, 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 and one is just saying Sorry, that he is the one God. It's identifying him as the one God, who is the only true God, because we believe in one God who exists in three hundred statues. Sorry, what's your name, sir? Alexander. Alexander. My name's Ryan. There is no difference between saying only you are the true God and you are the only true God. No, no, wait, if, if Sorry, there is only one true God who exists as three distinct persons, then those three distinct so persons can Jesus be can included? Rightly say, but can Jesus be included as the only true God? Yes. How? Because if he is the, if there is only one true God, he exists as three distinct type of status. No, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're what you're doing is is to Jesus. Exactly. You're, well, you're putting your well, preconceived no, notion. Everyone's which is not trying to read. Everyone's trying to read the Bible for a certain length. No. Okay. But John's gospel actually starts at chapter one, verse one. So in fact, what you're doing is is to Jesus. Because if we read it from the first chapter, it says, "In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was." God. So let's analyze. But that, let's analyze word, that. Is Jesus let's analyze. Okay. Go. Go. Let's, yeah. let's analyze that verse. Analyze that verse, please. So it says, "In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God." Correct. Yes. So who is this Word here? The Logos. Jesus. Christ. Jesus. So let's see. In the beginning was Jesus. Yes. And Jesus was with God. So who is God? Thank you. There's God is the Father is. Okay, and Jesus was God. Jesus is God. So, so wait, now so what you're wait, 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 hang on. Now what you're pulling to is modelism. The Greek, the Greek, that's that's what you're doing. Why the Greek is constructed in this way? Yeah. Because if you notice, there is a definite article lacking in the Greek. Yeah, whole chaos and chaos. Yes. 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 Because you you yourself say that it says kai theos, right? Yeah, it doesn't say Hopeos. 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 Yeah. Hopeos. And the reason why there's no definite article there is because John is trying to not complain. Theos, with half Theos here, so that the Father is not the Son in the same place. I agree with you, but then if I go with your interpretation, that because you believe in the concept of Trinity, correct? Even though in that verse it doesn't really assert Trinity. It, it only mentions Jesus. It actually Father. mentions a duality. That's duality. That, at best. At it best. just mentions a duality. That the, exactly. and, and not only that, but actually we can see conflict here, right? Because if you're saying that in the beginning was the Word, 
and the Word was with God. So before the Word became God, there were two gods in the beginning. So, for example, what? There's, there's one God who exists as two distinct persons. Sorry? There's one God who exists as two distinct persons. But this is why I brought into you the view of the monarchical trinity, because the Father's the only one who's nominal. The Son is God in a predicative sense. No, no, what I'm saying, right, is that if you look at John 1 1, let's, let's scrutinize John 1 1, right? It says, In the beginning was the Word, right? And the Word was with God, yes. right? So, before Jesus and God became one person, as you believe in, they're, they're not one person. So you don't believe in a person who they're, dis they're distinct persons. Oh no, they do believe in distinct. Okay, so when you say Jesus was God, is Jesus the Father? No. Okay. Now here's the deception that's happening in the translation. If you read in the KJV, the, the King James version, they put it as a capital G. Which to try to insinuate right, that is you referring to, to the say because China. there's no definite article there. Yes. It's talking about a lesson. So God. it should be Jesus so was in a God, verse, in not John Jesus was one, verse God. Eight, when it says that John was sent by God, is there a definite article there for God? Okay. G there okay. Is John. No definite article right. in verse eight. So okay. is John sent by a God or God? Okay. So, but I'm only going by the translation. If I'm you got going if by it, it as well. Was John yeah. sent by a God or God? Okay. Okay. If 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 John was sent by a God. Who do you believe it's referring to as a God? The Father. Of course it's referring to the So Father. you're saying the Father is no, a God? You're, no, I'm, say, I'm saying it's, it shouldn't be translated as a God. Because you're trying to say if the Greek word Theos or Theon lacks a definite article, it should be translated as a okay, God. Okay, so even for the sake of the form of God. So, but if we okay. apply that form of translation consistently, yes. we read verse 8, it says there was a man called John sent by God. Forget about but John the at the moment. Theos what I'm, no, no, no. There does let's, not have a definite article. No, no, no. Let's go back so to John. Was John sent by a lesson. No, no, no. God, no, let, no, no. Let's talk about John 1. One. It says in the beginning was the word, the yes. word was with God, and the word was God. Now, you've identified the word here as Jesus, correct? Yes. Okay, so we're coming to common agreement, right? And the word was with Jesus was with God. Who is God here? God there, there in that clause is the Father. Okay, when you say Jesus was God, is God here referring to the Father? No. Because it lacks a definite article. Brilliant. And that's so how does that prove the divinity that's of Christ? Why you don't confuse it doesn't. Not chaos with chaos in this verse. Okay. Which so, is why we don't conflate the Father with the Son in this. Brilliant. Verse. There's a very specific reason why John has made the Greek this way. God. Good. So. Oh, sorry. Here's the thing. Come on, come on. When you read the Bible. So like. The, oh, well, Salam. I have Adrian. the chocolates as well. <laughs> in the Bible, the, the, there has to be key terms and definitions that needs to be defined, right? So when we use the word God in the Bible. For example, if we read in the in Book of Exodus, chapter seven, verse one, it says that Moses was called as Elohim. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Was called as Elohim, right? Now, the Hebrew word Elohim in Hebrew is a, can be used as a plural of respect. So, for example, if you read in Genesis one one, it says Barashit bara Elohim. Barashit bara Elohim. In the beginning, God created. Exodus chapter seven verse one says he's made he's made Moses like God. Yeah, it doesn't it matter. Doesn't but he's called he as Elohim. Is. Okay, so is so 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 my but, question. But, but I do agree with you that yeah. in the Hebrew Elohim doesn't always refer correct, to Correct, correct. So when it says Jesus was a God, well, yeah, but so, here's the issue though. You're translating Kaiphaos as a God. But I I'm, disagree with that. But, but I'm going by your interpretation here. That if you're saying that it's not that Jesus is, cannot be referred as the capital G. I'm only using it as an English. Obviously, uh, no, in Greek I, language I, I and do, Hebrew, I do agree that he can be referred to as the capital G. Okay, I'm just but, saying that, that John specifically yes. makes a distinction between Hophaios and Phaios in this verse, so you don't confuse No, no, no. So, so, I agree with you, but then if you look at the KJV, it's translated as God as capital G. When it should be translated as a God. And no, if you read, well, the reason why it shouldn't be translated as a God is because if you apply this rule of translation consistently throughout the New Testament, you would have to say that every time Phaos or Phaon lacks a definite article, you have to translate it as a God. Yeah, correct. So we can use this rule in the Bible. So is the devil chapter, is, is the devil God? John chapter one, verse eight. Okay. John, there was a man called John yes. sent by God. But Phaos here does not have a definite article. Should we translate it as John was sent by a God? Of course not. So when the devel's so called when the devil's called God, yes. 
The devil's court got in, uh, I think, first second Corinthians, second Corinthians chapter chapter 4, verse 4. The reason right? why the Bible He's says called... that is, is saying the devil is the god of this world. It's not literally saying exactly. that the devil is... Not, it's not literally saying that the devil is Yahweh. It's saying that people worship the devil like his god because they follow his ways more than they follow Yahweh. Well, it's, it's not it's, the finished of article. Yeah, but that's exactly our point. So it's when, just because someone is called God, yes. it does not necessitate that that person's actually yeah. God. So for example, when it says in John 1.1, 1, 1, where it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, yes. right? Just because uh, Jesus is identified here as, as, as God, according to John 1.1, 1, 1, same thing in uh, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4, it does not, ne hold on, bear with me, it does not necessitate that these individuals are called exactly. God. Do, do you follow? Well, the, thing, the reason why is because it's dependent upon the context. I agree. You read I agree. The context, Absol yes. You absolutely. Read, yeah, but yeah. You read the context of John. I, 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 I accept that. Three, sir, it says that Jesus Christ, the Word, is the one that created everything. everything. If the Word is the one that's created everything, it very clearly means that in a qualitative sense, Jesus Christ is chaos. No, because if we look at John 14, verse 28, Jesus says, my father is greater than I, right? So clearly he doesn't... What, what sense in which is the father Well, Jesus? Well, the, in, in, in terms of, they're, they're clearly not co-substantial. They're clearly well, not, but, hold but on one second, bear with me. No, I hold on one second. They're Jesus not co- Jesus lesser in role, but not ontology. Because Jesus submits to the father. But that's even more of a that's, reason that's why he's not equal. Why that's equal. Equal. Yeah, that's more, even more of a reason why he cannot be equal to the Father. Okay, exactly. do you because find that... that say that he's equal to the Father. Wait, can I ask you a question? Oh, hold on, brother. Hold on. Sorry, sorry. Do you find that the Father submits to the Son? Yes, I was about to ask you. No, because the Son's the one who becomes incarnate. The Son's the one who, from eternity, takes the role. See, that, see that, that's... that's Again, that's they're not... Reason, if the Son becomes a human, then he must submit to the Father. Okay, so, okay, at best, the, it, you're showing... To myself that they're not equal, they're not equal right in yeah. every single way right because and for example you're saying in every single way but there's no ontological subordination that is implied by this verse. hold on one second let's go according to the verses in john chapter 5 verse 30 jesus okay do you find the father saying these following words i can of myself do nothing i judge as i hear but my judgment is honest because i'm not seeking my will i'm seeking the one who sent me if you can show me a verse where the father says the same words as jesus then i i would i would accept that they're equal exactly so the problem here is that you're trying to assert that jesus christ because he doesn't have the same because he's uh, no, so you were asserting that they, they they share the same divine equality, right? Or the same, nature. yeah, the same divine nature. Mm -hmm. they're, they're equal, they're called substantial. But yet, when we actually analyze the biblical text, we see that they're not equal. But we see that... Shouldn't we analyze the context of John Because I'm being a bit dishonest with the context of John chapter 5. Okay. Because at what, at okay, well, contextualize it for us then. ...is that Jesus does not act independently from the Father. In fact, if you read the context, it goes on to show that because he doesn't act independently from the Father, he can only do what the Father does, and yet the things that the Father does, which the Son does likewise, proves that the Son must be God. Now read this, I think it's... So wait, he do, hold on, so he does what the Father tells him to do, hold on, I'm just, I'm just trying to analyse... It says here, yeah. and this was why the Jews were persecuting Jesus, because he was doing these things on the Sabbath, but Jesus answered them, my Father is working until now, and I am working. This is why the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father, making himself equal with God. That's the very same context of the verse you quoted, John chapter 5, verse 16 through 18. Now Jesus says that in the same manner that the Father is exempt from working on the Sabbath, Jesus is exempt from working on the Sabbath. Wait, hold on one Jesus second. Jesus is exempt in the same way that the Father is, because the Father is upholding the universe on the Sabbath, and Jesus in the same way is exempt from working on the Sabbath. So the Jews, so, hold on one second. So the Jews accused, okay, so the, the Jews accused Jesus of making himself equal with the Father, is that right? Yes. Okay, so... So do you believe every accusation that the Jews made? I, I'm, I'm not saying that just because the Jews made that accusation, that that's... What but you, you but agree, you, but you I, agree... I, I agree with their accusation. Okay, However, right. however, however, you don't have to agree with every single accusation the Jews make. The reason why Jesus is God from this verse is because he says that in the same exact way that the Father is exempt from working on the Sabbath, he is. No, why no, is no. I'm going to... Sorry, I'm just... Because the Father is the one who upholds the universe on the day of the Sabbath. If Jesus is exempt in the exact same way that the Father is from working on the Sabbath, then guess what? Jesus is God. Okay, well, I, 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 find, that's, I, I, I find that's, uh, in my opinion, that's 
an illogical follower. Now, the reason, okay, I'm actually talking about John chapter 10, right? And we will get onto the Sabbath part in a second. To 530, though, so no, the reason I why. To address the verses you bring up. I understand that. But the reason why I brought up John chapter 5, verse 30 is because Jesus clearly here says that I can of myself do nothing. Now, yeah, if you're Jesus saying. Jesus doesn't act independently from the Father. Okay, so can if I you, if, if you read the context, Jesus says that everything that the Father does, he does likewise. Okay, now, but, what person could say that everything God does, I do? Alexander. Only someone who's. Is the Father independent? God. Is the Father, what do you mean? Is the Father independent? In what sense? In the sense that it's self existent, he doesn't depend. The father doesn't depend on anything for his existence. Okay, is but, the son, wait, hang on. Is the son independent or dependent? It depends what view of the Trinity you take. I would say that the son is dependent upon the father for his existence. But the father, but he's eternally begotten. But hang on, the Trinity, hang on, but the Trinity is supposed to be operated as co-equal, right? They, co they are co-equal right? co okay. in their ontology. On, on, ontology, ontology their correct. Essence. So ontologically, is the father independent from his creation? Ontologically, is he independent yes. of his creation? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Does what about the son? About the son? Yes. Uh, yes, he's ontologically independent. How? No, but you How? just said. You just said. You just said. said dependent upon the, the father. father. That, there you go. Possesses the fullness of the divine nature of the father because the father eternally communicates the divine nature to the son. No. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says very clearly that I can of my own self do, do nothing. nothing. Now, now, can you attribute this to the father? That he can of himself yes. do nothing. Yes. It, it depends what you mean by that, because Jesus Christ is saying. That what do you? What do you? Okay. When Jesus says, "Sorry, to, sorry to cut," I'm just trying to get to the point. So what with when the Father? They don't do nothing separately. That's yeah, what that's Jesus. Okay. Jesus Wait, hang on. But, but yeah, so he, even prophets, even, he, even, he, even prophets and messengers, even prophets and messengers, do anything Wait, of himself. Even, he does even, everything that God. But gives. everything, everything that the prophets been given authority Wait. by God. They'll carry the act. That does not make the prophets can, can as God. Can I ask you, which prophet can say that they can only do what God does? They can only do what God. Every prophet. So every Ma prophet. So uh, every pro every prophet. Every does. prophet carries the act by God's permission. For example. For example, no, no, there's a difference between yeah. saying Be that I do what God commands me to do, and Islam. I do everything that Alexander, God does. Alexander, even if in I Islam, do everything that God does, I'm by nature. No, but clearly, no, but hold on, clearly that's not true. That's not true because you know, again, if you if if you're saying that Jesus is mimicking God in everything that He can do, yeah. right? Okay, can the Father die? Can the Father die? Can the Father die? Yes. If the Father wanted to die. Let's say the Father took on the role for eternity to become incarnate and die upon the cross. Then he's okay. no longer God. Why? Okay, so can God die? Because, well, the reason why is because you're sneaking in an atheistic presupposition. No, no, no. no. Hold on one second. by the definition of God. Death does not mean ceasing to exist, right? I didn't say so it's ceasing to exist. Died by his human is God immortal? Well, actually, yes. Death does mean immortal means to exempt exist. from death. So was by Jesus definition. exempt from death, and is the Father exempt from death? Jesus Christ experienced death through his human. No, I didn't ask you that. The Bible says he alone, he alone is, immortal. is immortal. The Bible says that he alone is immortal. By the way, in a few, in a few minutes, I have to go to my phone. Back. No, okay. No, that's fine. That's fine. I'm just saying, the Bible says that he alone is immortal, right? He says he alone is immortal. Is Jesus immortal? His divine nature, you could say, is immortal. However, he can experience death by his human nature. Right, okay. So he says he alone, I'm going to repeat what I'm saying. He alone is immortal. So who, who, is immo who, who in this triune Godhead is alone who is immortal they, they in this are Godhead? All immortal as part of their divine nature. However, Jesus Christ's human nature is not immortal. And thus the person of the Son can experience can you tell me, Ed, can, his human nature. Can you tell me any verse, any explicit verse from Jesus himself that says I am fully God and fully man at the same time? Yeah. This is the teaching of the church. Okay, so, from, Ch let me hang, tell you what, on, hang on, because you're imploring yeah. the standard that everything must be from the lips of, of course, Jesus. even in Islam. Stated. But, okay, yeah, even in Islam, where in yeah. the Quran does Jesus say from his own lips, yeah. I am born of a virgin? I am born of the virgin. Yeah. Okay, from I, I, his own wait, wait, lips. Hang, hang on, hang on. We're talking about the claim of divinity. First of all, yeah, yes, wait, but, wait, but I, I'm using your same standard yeah. that you're using. Against no, but no, what you're that's, doing, that's what you're doing, by your own standard, that would mean that you're not allowed to believe Jesus. No, but no. we're Jesus talking about the, believe no. that. About God God no, but your whole, your whole belief, your whole belief rests on the foundation of the of certain things, which is the triune nature of God, Jesus's resurrection, right, and his death, right. So what? we are saying here right is that if you believe Jesus is God we have no um, explicit evidence what so you, if, if I show you oh, oh, wait hold Jesus on one second wait hold on one second hold on 
what you are providing to us, right, is implicit evidence. And it's open up to ambiguity, where it can be open up to interpretation, right? For example, John 1 1 is one of those verses that can be open up to interpretation. That's why you have the job. There's, there's no That's, oh, hold on one second, bear with me. But John, I, I'm just John saying. Bible witnesses are inconsistent. With wait, hold on one second. Yeah. Wait, hold on. The, no, see, the thing is. The reason why I'm asking for explicit evidence that is not subject to ambiguity is because, again, I was going to use a Jehovah Witness, and I know you might consider them as non-Christians, and I know a lot of Christians in the park don't consider them as Christians, but if you use John 1.1 1, 1 as, a, as, a, as a template for your belief, is that even, they, for example, the way how they translate John 1.1 1, 1 is that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. The problem, right? the wait, wait, hold on one second. Is they're inconsistent with the way they translate, because if you read verse 8, it, it says there the next was a man no, the, sent by God, but, but John sent by God does not have a definite article in the Greek. Who sent it John? doesn't say Hophaios, it just says Phaios. So who sent so John? In their translation, it doesn't say John was sent by a God, it says John was sent by God. Okay. So even them in their translation is inconsistent. No, hold on one second the reason why i feel that maybe you could be possibly inconsistent yourself with all due respect is that even if we look at the translations of the bible for example when uh, the men of the east they came and uh, they they came from i think bethlehem and they wanted to visit jesus then they worshipped him they it said that they worshipped jesus now if we look at the greek it uses the greek word proskunio right proskunio actually means to pay homage right to pay respect now, if I, we, I, I have no problem if you translate it that way. No, but hold on one second. Now, Christians use that as a template to actually prove that Jesus is actually God. Have, have you heard me use no, it? No, 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 no. Exactly. I'm not saying. No, I'm not saying. Exactly. By the way, I'm not saying that you're using that. Or well, what I'm saying, right, is that if we look at other verses of the Bible, there were other people that received worship, and then the word worship is not used. They, they received homage, such as King David received homage. Okay. Not worship in the same sense that God receives. It. Okay, Daniel However, agrees on that. Jesus Christ that. does receive the same worship as God does in Revelation chapter five. Because what does it say? It says that every every single one in creation bowed down to the Lamb and the one sitting on the throne. Now, if everyone in creation bows down to the Lamb and the one on the throne, not only can the Lamb not be part of creation, but they are worshiping. So is Daniel. Hold on. So Daniel are you saying worship. are you saying that if someone worships someone, that means they're God? I'm saying that Revelation chapter five, when they are worshiping. Them, I'm not saying that the worship just means Jesus is God. I'm saying that it, because it describes all of creation worshiping them, Jesus is excluded from. Okay, so creation, Daniel received worship. Daniel, Daniel creation, received worship. And that means that he can't be creation and he must be the God. Okay, Daniel received worship in Daniel chapter two, verse that's, that's, forty-six. My point isn't that because he received worship that he's God. My point is that because he's not creation. Okay. In verse, he's okay. God. So what? Okay. So we have a verse in the Quran which we which we teach this, right? In Surah Imran chapter 3 verse 50, Allah says, Inna matala Isa in Allahi kamatali Adam, halakuhum in turab, tumma qala lahu kum fayakul. That the likeness, indeed the likeness of Jesus in the sight of Allah, in the sight of God, is like that of Adam. He created him dust and says, so he be, and it is. Almighty God, he demonstrates a thousand different ways. So he created Adam without a mother and a father. He created Jesus without a biological father. He created Eve from the ribs of Adam. And he created us human beings with a mother and father. That does not mean that Adam is God. That does not mean Jesus is God. That only demonstrates the power of God. Okay? So to say that Jesus is not a creation, it, I mean, we're going by so, the birth. So, Wait, hang, hang on. We're going so by birth. My, my point <laughs> is, though, that in, okay, I'm going to have to leave in a minute. My phone okay, if like, you no need problem, to go, but, fine. But no my problem. point was in Revelation chapter 5 is that because all of creation worships Jesus, it excludes Jesus from being part of creation. Yeah, but so is Daniel. Daniel was worshipped. But he wasn't worshipped by all of creation. He was a creation himself. He was a creation he himself. He's a creation himself. How are you excluding him from the creation by saying, it's like me saying, all the creation worship me, therefore I'm not a creation. Are we creation? If all of creation worships you, and, and you're and not worshipping yourself. Creation? Can I say so, I'm not creation therefore? Exactly. Yeah, you would have to if all of, if of the statement that all of creation. No, I would have to sell to the creation. True. I'm a creator, creation like you. Let's all worship the creator. Exactly. Yeah, but Jesus Christ and his divine. Alexander, Christ. Alexander. I'm going to have to leave. Uh, one more thing, one more thing. Alexander, do you agree that we have a. No, nice to meet you. Do, do, you, do you agree that we were born? Yeah? Uh huh. Okay. What, uh, what, uh, cal I'm really gonna what calendar are we? Wait, what yeah, calendar? What? Gonna okay, we chocolates. Right. And I mean, we're, we're, we're going by Jesus's birthday. God bless Alexander. You. You're, you're, you're a gentleman. Take it. We like, oh, thank you. Very good. Thank you. Have a nice day. Take care. I, I, I may be back here another time. Come on, here on Sunday. Okay. Take it. Take it.